Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. As I mentioned, the Daily Financial News this morning got an extra special, super secret guest this morning. We have the ADU man himself, Derek. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing better than I deserve. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that, man. I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, we're going to dive into ADUs, why they make sense, why are they are a great path to wealth. But before we get there, Derek, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience, where, where, what you do, what you're doing in this crazy world of real estate, and we'll get into your story first. Yeah, great. Thanks, folks. I'm so glad to be here. An honor to be on your show. Thanks so much. My name is Derek Shirell. I'm known as that ADU guy. And I have a goal of creating an influence that will uh, lead to the process of an accessory dwelling unit for 1 million people in my lifetime. Oh, yeah, and that's not a far-fetched goal, because if we look at some areas uh, in, in British Columbia or, say, Portland, Oregon, where the infill ADU percentage is up higher than 10%. And we look at the total population of this country and the needed infill housing and the buildable lands we have. I believe in my lifetime, that's an attainable goal to make that much influence. That and awesome. my why is, you know, I grew up poor with a single mom and um, housing is something that's really near and dear to my heart. And so I, I look to go the extra mile. My business model is buy, build and hold accessory dwelling units one at a time with the super simple, repeatable primary mortgage strategy where we, we buy a house with 5%. We slowly over time build or attach or add a ADU. And then after 365 days, we start looking for a perfect strike uh, right down the middle to go do it again. And I teach people how to do this. I work with first time buyers for free mm -hmm. to help them break the barrier of home ownership. That's, That's the majority awesome. of my work. And then I also do private coaching and I have an ADU mastermind. Oh, that is awesome. One of the things you have to know that, uh, you know, will hopefully get you to that million mark is California has made a specific uh, legislative, legis, whatever. Gavin Newsom so SB8, wants to... SB9. Yeah, I'm all over it. I have a, yeah. a background in planning and I, I got so obsessed with ADUs and complained so much. I finally joined a planning commission. <laughs> so I'm, I'm an amateur oh, planner wow. and I've spent close to two decades deep diving into legislation Yep. on accessory dwelling units. And that's what I'd love to, to share with your audience is how we have to become experts in our local zoning code, because that's the playbook of how we get wealthy and create housing. Absolutely. So let's define for folks that maybe have just heard the ADU term, but really don't know what it is. Where does it play? What is it? Uh, why don't we start there? Great question, Michael. So an ADU is, is kind of the national code language, and it stands for accessory dwelling unit. And AARP is, is the major player in the legislative space. So they have written what is really the model code that states are adopting. California really uh, adopted a lot of the AARP code. So ADU is the most common terminology that we're going to use moving forward in legislative actions, in my opinion. But they're also known as granny flats, guest houses, casitas, um, back house, carriage house. There's a million things that, that they're known as. But what, it, what we need to focus on is it is a secondary legal dwelling in a zone that's primarily been reserved for single family. Yeah. And this is the way folks that you could buy one, right? You could buy a single family home and actually instead of having roommates, which is totally okay if you want to house hack that way, but you can actually create income, right? You could have your single family home, home produce income with a secondary unit. And again, the ADUs can be done lots of different ways. There are lots of houses, not typically today, but historically that had garages that were detached, right? House in front, the garage is kind of long driveway to the back. Lots of folks have been converting those into uh, ADUs, basically building up, right? Some of them have been taking garages that are attached. I know some people doing this in Vegas, right? Attached to car garage and making it a studio, right? Again, it's about understanding what your municipality will accept, right? You have, you should always do it to code, get it approved. Uh, but there, there's, it's not done the same way everywhere. Is that fair? Yeah, that's very fair. And just to touch on a couple of great points, wonderful points, Michael, obviously you're a pro, but we want to do them legally. So we're building a business, even if it's one rental at a time, we're building a business. This has to be a legal allowable use. It's got to be insured as a rental. So really it's just house hacking on steroids. We just yeah. pull some permits, pay some SDCs, but we do it right. So in a year, when we move to another place to go repeat this strategy, 
we have basically turned it into a duplex or a triplex that can legally be rented, that can legally be stated on our incomes. So we can use that income after we leave our nine to fives to go buy more, more property. And the, the, the point of the garage conversion, that's a great one. I mean, it's an awesome way for infill. It's really important to mention for your listeners specifically, dive into your code because California has the best, quote me here, the best ADU state language in the country. Shut and when up. I was at a, California I'm not has a, no, come the on. Best. And I was in Central California just preaching ADUs um, within the last couple of weeks. And I talked to some high level people that were like, oh, no, but they don't really like them in our area. And oh, our city fights those. It's like, no, 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 no. You guys are not quite up with the times. This all just changed. So not only is California ADU friendly, the state has said all you municipalities have done a horrible job with land use planning. We're going to tie your hands and we're going to make the decisions for you. These are allowable uses in every single family zone. And not only can you build an accessory dwelling unit in any municipality, just about any municipality in your state, you can build two. So you have the ADU, which depending on your municipality, like you said, they're all different. It could be a max of 800 or a thousand square feet or 75% of the primary. They're all a little bit different, but you can also do a JADU, which is up to 500 square feet and is within the existing footprint of the current house. So if you buy a a 1500 square foot house with a 500 square foot garage, you can convert that garage, adding additional conditioned square footage to your house, which is increasing the value of your home. Mm -hmm. And you can also build the ADU. So we don't use duplex triplex in this language. These are accessory uses to the primary, but for all intents and purposes with some size limitations, we're taking single family houses that nobody else is shopping for investment style. And we're, yep. we're creating duplexes and triplexes. And it's almost like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the things people should look for, right? Because I've, I've personally just started this. One of the things I'm going to, it's actually on my freaking vision board is I'm going to finally build an ADU uh, and yes. on one of the lots in California. It's already, it's already gone through lots of rubber stamping at the city level. I think there's one more to go. COVID certainly slowed it down. Uh, but hopefully in the next 30 days or so, we'll be fully approved. Uh, for me, just to kind of bring you up to speed, right? I bought a house years ago, big city lot, house is built on the back. It's actually a corner lot. So house is here. I'm going to build the house, you know, on the other side. It's, it kind of makes perfect sense. It probably should have always been two houses. It's just that big a lot. But that is going to be my first attempt. But when I step back and look at what I'm doing here, I'm looking at like, Okay, I have a few more houses I could do this at that are like no brainers. But when you step back and look at again, houses built in the 50s, very commonly in my area were 10,000 when maybe 8,000 square foot lots. Damn near all of them have the appropriate setbacks and other rules where you could put a small casita or second home or what you know, another unit. And again, you'll have choices. For me on this one, uh, I made the original mistake, right? I went, what how big can it go? And the answer was 1,200 square feet. And I was like, well, when I did the math, I'm like, well, the kind of yield or what I consider cash flow, the return on my event wasn't great. And I'm like, well, you know what? If I can go build a two bedroom, one bath, 660 square foot house, that return is going to be amazing. So I'm not building the biggest I could. I'm building the best return. What do you think of that? I think you're brilliant. <laughs> I think you're I like brilliant. You. I like you brother. already. <laughs> uh, so there, that's a great point. So there's there's no economy of scale when we build these. So they all are going to have a full kitchen. They're going to have a bathroom. If you're doing it right, they're going to have in-unit yeah, laundry. They sure. have all the expenses that a, a large house would have without any economy of scale in these large open spaces like bedrooms or living rooms. Mm -hmm. So I, I design and build my accessory dwelling units with the end user in mind. And my end user, my my perfect tenant, creme de la creme, as, as Joe Asamoa would call them, is a young professional in a one bedroom, one bath with a loft is what everybody wants. There you go. So it costs about $200 a square foot to build an affordable dwelling unit. And I can build a 600 square foot unit that stay rents for 1500. If I built a 1200 square foot unit, it is not going to rent for 3000. It's going to exactly. rent for 1700, maybe. maybe. So you have to, um, you know, a, you have to know your end user. You know, you have to know your market and know your client. And it's worth noting right now, Michael, that it's it's the same price to build an ADU in Aspen as it is in, I'm not going to pick on any cities, but just think of the worst neighborhood in the worst city of your state. Yeah. It's about the same price to build it there. So know your end user, know what they want, 
mm-hmm. and then work backwards from there to find the return. So I'm not trying to, to blow smoke at you and say you're brilliant, but you, you obviously are a master of understanding the fundamentals of real estate and don't overspend to no. get a lower return. Yeah, it, it, everything boil. Everything I do boils down the yield. I'm always. It's very simple calculation. In fact, the, the video I recorded before this one was breaking that down for folks. Yeah. I had to oh, take money I- out of my account, and I want to know how much money is coming back, and I want the biggest number possible. It is that freaking simple. Yeah, it's not number of units. It's not cap rate. It's not even cash flow. I want to know how much money comes out and how much money goes in, and I'm going to buy the. I'm going to pick the biggest number. And right now, for me, it is an ADU. It's oh, totally. This. Oh, totally. And I, I can't move on in this conversation without adding to that and saying, Michael, not only are you looking for the greatest return, everybody wants to stack these up to what their money could do, go buying a duplex. And I just have to remind you, you just kind of hammered in and foot stomped ROI. Mm-hmm. ROI is not just money return. It's also your time. Yes. So it's not a comparison to a 1970s duplex that everybody else is shopping for. This is a brand new high efficiency unit with the best tenant in the market. Mm-hmm. And the, the factor on ROI of your time is really just like glossed over in this conversation with a lot of more high level investors that want to shoot down the idea. And it's really, it's really important that we, we just plug the ROI on our time and our headache factor yeah. as we add another rental to the pile. Yeah. Well, we're going to hit this again at the end. We're going to keep going, but this is so much fun. Where can people find you, get part of your world, reach out, all that good stuff? Yeah, Michael, thanks. Um, ThatADUguy.com is where I'm at. So that ADU guy, I am that guy. And I have a a super simple uh, YouTube channel where I'm trying to open source the whole build process. I'm building a detached ADU at a house right now. And I'm I'm just literally sharing a video every day of something I'm doing. I mean, yesterday it was uh, staining the wood floor. I put in a real white oak nail down wood floor and I'm staining it and showing everybody, hey, you can go rent a buffer and you can apply this. You can put a real hardwood floor in your house. So I'm sharing that there. And then, um, you know, my, my contact information is there. I'm still small enough that if you call me, I will probably answer the (laughs) phone, which is, uh, I'm really proud to say that I I'm a fireman professionally. And I I just resigned from my nine to five after hitting, you know, kind of my mark two years ago and being too afraid to take the dive. So I have a lot more time. My channel's brand new. I just really started this business at the first of the year, even though I've been building on it for 25 years. That's awesome. Well, let's keep going on this. I want people to realize, again, it is possible. Let's try to to, to tell me the kind of avatar house that really could go from one rent check to three. I mean, so it probably has to have a, it probably has to have an attached garage in this case. Well, potentially Uh, everybody goes to garage and garage is not the first place we should go because um, a uh, most standards we have to meet, you have to have two off street parking spots for the primary mm. house. So if we turn our, our parking standard checkbox into living space, we have no off street parking. Gotcha. And that's before we even talk about the, again, we have to be experts in our local ADU zoning code. That's that's before we even realize if there's a, a required off street parking spot for the ADU. Ah, so yes. what I tell people is, no, don't worry about the garage. We are looking for, I, I grab my ADU goggles. I, I literally show up at a house or I look on the MLS and I put my ADU goggles on. <laughs> I love it. And I'm looking for a large master bedroom with an exterior entrance. So what we have there is we have a built-in studio already. If we put a kitchenette in it, um, I just did one recently where there was this big gaudy left wing of the house. It was a formal dining room and a second living room. And it's like, no, 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 no. That is the ADU. I, I simply put up, Uh, two layers of five eighths drywall to firewall it. I soundproof the whole shared wall, put in a smoke detector, uh, O2 detector, pulled the permits, paid the SDCs and like, bam, now I have the happiest tenant in Oregon and that ADU and we just did it again. So I'm looking for houses that have 1800 or more square feet. And, you know, if it's a three, two, I can make it work. But ideally if it's like a four, three, any four, three will work. Mm. But the master bedroom that has an exterior entrance is the easiest and cheapest all day long, all Got day, all day. The garages are okay too, but if you're in a garage, you have to keep two things in mind. Where is the sewer access? Because yeah. we use sewer for gravity because it works. Yeah. And is there a vapor barrier under the concrete? And if not, we have to bring the floor up with sleepers and insulation. And what does that do to our headroom? Yeah. If we start having to tear trusses off or go up, it's more cost effective to build standalone. Nice. I see. I love all this. This is why you need to reach out to what is the website one more time? That ADU guy? That ADU guy.com. And just awesome. to, to add one piece to that is 
is connected units are way more affordable and they're, they're way cheaper to convert, but they're less desirable. So sure. if we have to do them, because this is our barrier of entry for the first time home buyer, which, which most people I help it is, let's look for a place where we can convert. Mm -hmm. It's a very small price uh, under $2,000 and we can fully soundproof that wall and um, with some proprietary products to cut down on vibration and sound transfer. So we, we get less of a reduction on desirability in rents because you have more privacy. Yeah, so let's break down this for because again, a lot of first time home buyers, a lot of people with different YouTube channels, Spencer Cornelia, um, Todd Baldwin, two other guys that I speak with all the time. They're very much into having roommates. And then I talk to other house hacking guys that are saying, you know, go buy a fourplex and, and you know do it that way. Four, three, two, one, all of those strategies. Mm -hmm. This is kind of kind of down the middle of both of those, right? It's looking for the right house. I love the four three example. I think that is genius looking for a way to split off a one, one, you still have a three, two and a one, one. You're not really changing the footprint. You may be adjusting walls and doors, things of that nature. Uh, and then you could still, at least in many cases, put a full five, 600 square foot unit in the back, getting a third rent check, right? Both. Yes. Yeah. That's an amazing point. So you can do the, in your state, you can do the JADU and a beautiful thing about a JADU is it can have shared sanitation. You don't even need to have its own bathrooms. You can basically oh, wow. have the roommate model. Uh, I call it the, the house share or some people call it the co-living. So mm -hmm. say you have a, a three, two where you can't convert. You just have a legal roommate and you have a roommate agreement. So it's a business. Mm -hmm. And then you build a detached unit, which you insure on its own as a rental. So you have liability for that. So you can do a combination of house share and uh, yeah. ADU. And what's so powerful about the ADU strategy though, especially if you're going to go repeat this strategy next year and you want to take a HELOC before you go, every primary you buy with 5%, you add all this value. And then right before you go repeat the project, you pull a HELOC and you're getting way more value for the legal ADU. Mm -hmm. If you have a house share situation, you're not going to capture that same value. Yeah. So there's a little more money up front. It may cost $30,000 in permits to put in the kitchenette and pay the SDCs, but you've got $60,000 of value. And I'll tell you what, appraisers are waking up to these. I just did a, a, a refi and had appraisal done. And I had a place where I had two primary dwellings and each with two ADUs. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a, a sixplex on a single family lot with one tax bill. That oh. is beautiful. That's yeah. how you, you bump your cash flow. Yeah. And the appraiser used detached new multifamily cluster housing for comps. Wow. Yeah, you don't get that when you have a house share. So I basically had this single family that I turned into the standalone um, complex of, of cluster ADUs and the value you get is huge. And then you can, it springboards you to the next project. And this, you did this in Oregon, I guess? This is all in Oregon. Yeah. I, I, I invest in two small markets where I grew up, where I know, uh, and I, I can't even tell you one town over what the current trend is. I'm so laser focused on know, my one. Know tiny your market. Area. Know your market. That's it. You only have to know one and be really good at it. Yeah. And, and again, I talk about a buy box, know your market. It, folks, just rinse and repeat. Just keep doing the homework. Keep know your lane. Forget the other lanes. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah. It doesn't when, matter. When, when you hit mastery and you get really, really bored, that's when you know you're in the right spot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the other thing I want to talk about is appraisals because there's a lot of people that are looking at this. Uh, basically, they're trying to almost burr ADUs. And for the last year or so, so it really hasn't turned out well because the, the appraisers, right, given all the rules that are brought out after the Great Recession, there's a lot of rules that they needed to have comps. They needed to have other things that they could bring to. So what I hear you saying is that's going to get better and it will it will just get better every month as more and more of these are produced. Is that fair to say? That's overly fair to say. And a couple of side notes on that, you know, in, in Oregon, we just happen to have been on the leading edge of this and there, there's data for the last 25 years. California is going to get there. This isn't just right. a fad. This is the, the oh, this is man. the newest, this is the newest, most exciting thing to hit the housing industry since multifamily. And I would say appraisals or appraisers, um, he, she, they are coming up to, to speed really, really quick on these. And I tell people, even if you're in an area that's getting hammered by, by appraisers that don't like ADUs, um, just look at the finished square foot value for living space and start and underwrite your project there. So you may not get standalone value for your ADU, but if, right. if your houses in your market are selling at $300 a square foot and you do legal converted living space, that's a good spot to start. And you yeah. can argue that and, and you can appeal that on any appraisal any day of the week. 
Right. So you won't um, and, get full value, but uh, you'll, you'll get, again, I think that's a great kind of cautionary tale. Cause I, again, where, wherever Burr breaks down the traditional Burr buy it, you know, uh, repair it, rent refi is, is at the refi. So just protect yeah. yourself at, with the ADUs. And again, it'll come around. It's just totally, totally. Yeah. This is, this is one more B in the Burr it's buy build. And yeah. one thing that's worth mm-hmm. sharing with your audience, because I know your conservative nature from mm-hmm. following you a little bit, and mm-hmm. it's really, really, really important in my heart to share this. So I was a builder in 06, 07. I saw all my friends lose their boats, lose their mm-hmm. houses. Everybody in the last 10 years been buying, you know, borrowing hard money at 10% and making 10% on top of it. The market has made us look really good. We're not that good. We're no, not. Exactly. So burning all your money out, not being able to burr out of it. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I can't burr all my money out. That's going to be a favor that the lending system gives you when we go into our next healthy economic downturn, which is coming. Oh, so yeah. the more equity we leave in the deal, it may not be ideal for the new investor with no money, but I'm sorry, you need to leave some money in these yeah, deals. It's because okay. All these investors that have been on the market for the last 10 or 15 years, they don't know what pain is. They don't know what it's like. So the more equity equity we leave in our deals, Michael, as you know, the more cash flow we have and the more comfort we have and the better we're going to sleep at night when nobody's talking about real estate, at least with not the same enthusiasm in the next, you know, 12 to 36 months, yeah. because that's healthy. We're going to have a healthy downturn and we're going yeah. to be glad we left money in deals because our cash flow will be, will be great and it will float us. Yeah. So what other, other bits and pieces of advice, if you wanted to give a new investor kind of, hey, here's a buy box that I would look at. I think the 4.3 the was a great example. What other things, should, like if they're looking at older homes, what, what about it? Like, you know, think 1950s, 1960s. What are they looking for there? They're looking for a, a spot to build a standalone. I mean, if it's an older house, I would say it probably has a larger lot. Mm-hmm. If it's a 50s home, it probably has cast plumbing and galvanized mm-hmm. water lines. It's a little bit harder to tap into. You might go to do your sewer connection. One awesome thing about an ADU is we can piggyback on all the really expensive utility connections to the primary house. Yeah. But if it's a 40s or 50s house, there might be Orangeburg pipe or terracotta sewer line. We might have all these infrastructure issues. We might have to do a panel upgrade mm-hmm. before we put a sub box off to jump off to the ADU. So if mm-hmm. I'm looking at a 1950s house, I, I'm assuming it's on a larger lot and I'm looking for alley access and how can I build a standalone ADU for under hundred grand Brand that's going to rent for fifteen hundred a month. Period, exactly. and that's yeah. that's 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 kind of vanilla across many markets. You can do that right now, and if you paid all cash, that's a fifteen percent cash on cash return. But it's also paid off in you know eight or nine years. That's mm-hmm. with no leverage. You use a little tiny bit of leverage and a little tiny bit of creativity, and you're you're at 50, 60, 70 percent cash on cash return mm-hmm. for eight or nine years. Then it's infinite. And yeah. what's even more beautiful about that is, again, the, the one house at a time strategy, buy it with 5% down, mm-hmm. lowest possible rate in the industry, and you can repeat that indefinitely. There's not a, a cap at 10, like a lot of people think. Freddie and mm-hmm. Fannie will let you do as many as you want, as long as they're primary. Move in within 60 days, stay for 365, repeat. Yeah, again, I hope people heard that, right? What he's talking about doing is go and get an FHA loan with 5% down, owner occupy. But you're looking yeah, traditional. for a, right, traditional. Yeah. yeah loan. And uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That FHA is, you know, you can do a three and a half percent down. It's a little, there's a lot more fees and their PMI mm-hmm. is way higher. And it, it's mm-hmm. it's not the best product unless you have to have it because you have a lower credit score. So mm-hmm. I just look for conventional traditional oh, 5%. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Owner rock. Owner rock. Yes. And then again, yes, sir. 365. Move on to the next one. This is this pull the HELOC be- before you do it. Pull the yes. HELOC before you do it. So you, yeah. every little, every single house has its own bank account attached to it and don't use it, but you have it. Yeah. And again, pull it when you're living there. <laughs> yeah. Make, while you're on our, this is just such amazing. And again, this is something you do once a year, just once a year, rinse and repeat. Uh, why don't you, why don't you give somebody as we kind of wrap this up, what is the rough outline, right? Okay. I closed my house. I'm there. It's what is it? March 10th. Just give them a rough outline. How long do you think it will take before you're actually broke ground and you're actually building? Just give them a rough outline of timelines. Great, great. Excellent point. The most important point. Don't call me when you close on the house. When you have an accepted offer, you need to become an expert in zoning code. You need to get a warm fuzzy from the city planner mm-hmm. email. Hey, I just bought a house at 123 Adams. I want to do an attached accessory dwelling unit. Mm-hmm. Can I meet the standards in this zone and how? And you need to have a full-blown green light before that house closes. I get calls all the time from realtors that just bought a house with ADU potential and it doesn't have ADU potential and it just closed. Oh, so I am doing planning processes 
And I'll even sometimes get uh, the signature of the seller to actually do an application at the planning department. I start mm. the political uh, bureaucratic ball rolling while the house is in escrow. That's so when right. it closes, not only do I know, yes, I'm going to do a conversion or I'm going to do a standalone, I am hitting the ground running. And as a builder, I'm really spoiled because I'm an investor at heart, but I'm uh, art building ADUs is my art. That's what I live for. So mm. I can do them quickly. I try to do them in 90 days. Um, but a realistic, if you're, if you're just an average person working a nine to five and you know, it's an allowable use, you close on it. The first thing you're going to want to do is get a set of plans mm -hmm. and uh, get a plot plan and get approval from the city that your 600 square foot ADU over garage is going to meet the setbacks. And then you mm -hmm. just start shopping those plans around to a builder, find mm -hmm. somebody you can trust mm -hmm. that has referrals. Everybody mm -hmm. knows somebody, if they're watching your show, they know a builder oh, for sure. and just start shopping that around to get it going. The planning process there's, there's laws now that say it can't take more than uh, 12 weeks or it can't take more than 180 days if it's a type two. There's rules around it. But I say, on average, plan for three months of planning yeah. and then plan for six months of building. That's so we're in a nine-month window. But what's so beautiful is it always is going to, most of the time, it'll take longer and cost more, which what <laughs> puts you a little yeah. bit more over budget, but puts you at one year exactly. just in time to lease it up, get a lease agreement with no change to your debt to income and your lendability, you go buy another one. And it's so, I mean, it's so simple that people look right over it. Yeah, exactly. Well, one more time, where do people need to reach out to you? Because hopefully you're going to get a lot of folks reaching out. Where do they go? That ADU guy dot com is my website there's a link to my youtube channel you can check out my mastermind you can call me i'll probably answer you can send me an email if i get a thousand emails and there's a one hour callback it will take me one year but i promise i will get back to you and we'll talk adus there you go man this has been a lot of fun thank you very much uh, i had a great time my pleasure thank you mm -hmm.